Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the expansion of the universe, or the concept known as dark energy. And actually one of the recent studies that makes a pretty intriguing proposition, which unfortunately we currently are unable to test, because we don't really know much about dark energy to begin with. But the proposition suggesting that in the next few hundreds of millions of years, or even sooner, the universe might actually start to decelerate and eventually even contract. And potentially even contract to the point where it basically shrinks into the infinity once again, restarting the entire process once again. But before I explain more, you also have to remember that a lot of this currently is extremely hypothetical and theoretical. In essence, almost none of this is currently provable based on the observations we have around the universe. There's just not enough data available to say if this is correct or not. But mathematically, it does make sense. But first, let's start with some of the basics in regards to the expansion of the universe, and I guess in regards to the timeline as well. With this image right here, giving us a basic idea of where everything is on this timeline. So roughly around 13.8 billion years ago, that's when the Big Bang began. The universe came to be increasing in size quite dramatically. This period is known as the inflation, and it lasted for just a fraction of a second. And the amount of expansion during this period is actually kind of mind-blowing. It's been compared to taking a single DNA molecule and expanding it to over approximately 10 light years in length in just a tiny fraction of a second. And that's the basics of the so-called inflation theory. But why this happened, and I guess how this happened, is still unknown today. This theory was actually postulated based on the observations of the primordial light. Then the universe started to expand a little bit slower, with all of this lasting for roughly around 7.7 .7 billion years. And something else happened right at that time. For some reason, the universe then started to accelerate its expansion. In other words, everything in the universe started to move away from each other faster and faster. And that's actually something that came as a complete surprise to scientists back in 1998. According to all of the theories prior to this, the universe was actually expected to slowly decelerate, mostly because of the gravitational attraction of various types of matter in the universe. But there were two very specific projects, the Supernova Cosmology Project and the HiZ Supernova Search Team, that used the data from a lot of different Type 1a supernova from around the universe to discover that for some reason the universe was actually expanding faster and faster the farther in the universe you look. Something that seems to have begun approximately 5 billion years ago. And because of this discovery and because of the propositions made in 1998, the scientists behind all of these studies ended up winning the Nobel Prize. But since then, these discoveries created a lot more questions than provided answers. With one major question of course being, what exactly is causing all of this? And is this something that's going to be going on for a very long time? And is this going to be the reason why the universe eventually ends? Is it going to, at some point, expand so fast that it actually rips apart? The hypothetical end scenario for the universe known as the Big Rip. Well, technically this is where the facts end and hypothesizing begins. Because mostly everything after this is simply theoretical and currently has no physical proof. There are some proofs for certain ideas, but pretty much everything you hear about the end of the universe after this is usually based on mathematical concepts without actual physical proof provided anywhere. Although before I go on, I actually wanted to also show you this image that's often presented when discussing the idea of expansion of the universe, because there are often misconceptions about what the expansion actually means. In this case, we have to remember that when we say expansion of the universe, it's not really expanding into anything, and it doesn't require anything outside of this space to exist. In other words, there's no actual wall, there's no edge of any kind, it's not really touching anything on the outskirts. But the space-time itself, the stuff we're in, is expanding itself. So in other words, two points of space-time are actually going to be farther apart in the next few billion years from now. Which also means that our galaxy right here, in approximately one trillion years, is not going to have any neighbors anymore. As a matter of fact, if you're still around and if the universe is still around in a trillion years, which we're not sure about, there's not going to be anything in the night skies resembling any galaxy. The concept of a galaxy is going to be gone forever. And I've talked about this in one of the older videos about what all of this might look like in a trillion years, somewhere right there or in the description. But the principle here is really simple. 
everything around us is moving farther and farther and farther apart, and at some point, the galaxies are all going to be beyond the observable universe. At this point, if there's any sort of species living on some alien planet, they're not going to even know what galaxies are. Which always made me wonder, has there ever been something in the past, something that is no longer visible to us, something that maybe ancient aliens somewhere out there knew existed, but we cannot possibly even imagine because it's just beyond the observable universe. Once again, a, another hypothetical concept, nothing we can prove definitively. But there's always been attempts to try to explain the expansion of the universe and the idea of dark energy. For example, there are models, such as the back reaction conjecture proposed by Sixi Rasanen, that suggest that maybe we're just in a very special region of the universe where everything seems to expand a little bit faster, and so we think that it, things are accelerating. Maybe we're just in a very special region of the universe where, for one reason or another, things move a little bit faster. Or maybe it's actually an illusion. Maybe there is no dark energy and there is no acceleration of the expansion, and it's all basically just a bias in all of the data we've collected over the past few decades. And although it is a possible explanation, a lot of recent data suggests otherwise. It does suggest that something is actually causing the acceleration. But the most popular explanation of all of this is actually from the Einstein's equations, specifically Einstein field equations, where there is a constant known as the cosmological constant that suggests that all of this is actually in the fabric of space-time itself. In other words, it suggests that dark energy can never change, and the universe should always be expanding or even accelerating its expansion, no matter when or where you are. So basically, it's as if it's part of the equation that's everywhere around us, which would also not really require any particle or any other explanation. But that's not really something we can prove right now, and also a lot of data suggests otherwise. There have been suggestions that cosmological constant might actually be not a constant at all. We've discussed this in some of the previous videos right there or in the description. And so there are quite a lot of alternative explanations to all of this. And one of the more interesting ones involves something known as quintessence. With the word quintessence simply meaning fifth matter, matter number five. And that's a proposition for an existence of a kind of a particle of dark energy that is not a constant and whose density and whose properties do change with time. And so instead of being a constant in the equation of space-time, it's literally a kind of a substance that seems to transform depending on the concentration and depending on the density. And in case you're wondering why it's called quintessence or fifth matter, it's because today in physics, the scientists generally believe that the four other matters are, well, dark matter, of course, the more mysterious one, but also the stuff we made from, which is the baryonic matter, the neutrinos, and of course, all of the energy or light around us, with that fifth stuff being quintessence or dark energy. And so the theoretical physicists behind this paper wanted to see if they can crunch some numbers and figure out what could possibly happen to quintessence with time, depending on its properties. And first of all, the scientists who do subscribe to this idea usually mention that depending on the ratio of quintessence in the universe, it will become either attractive or repulsive. And generally it's believed that it became repulsive approximately 10 billion years ago or about 3.5 billion years after the Big Bang. In other words, if you were to look at this again, it really became repulsive somewhere around this time. And even though it's been expanding our universe for billions of years, the calculations in this paper suggest that it actually might be weakening in its repulsive forces. And in the most extreme case, in 65 million years from now, the acceleration of the universe could actually end completely. With quintessence then changing its properties and, instead of being repulsive, now becoming attractive. And following this, about 165 million years from now, the universe could stop expanding completely and instead would enter a slow contraction era, which, depending on what happens to quintessence afterwards, might end the universe completely in just a few billion years. In other words, it might actually start contracting to the point where it returns back to singularity, at least from the preliminary calculations. And this could obviously lead to what's known as the Big Crunch, where everything sort of contracts back into a very, very hot mass and eventually disappears. Or it could lead to that other idea proposed by several scientists, including Roger Penrose, the idea behind the Big Bounce. The universe might bounce back and create a completely new universe after that, essentially restarting the cycle in the process. 
So that's of course where nobody really knows what's going to happen just yet, simply because we just lack observational data. But I guess what's sort of surprising from these calculations in this paper is how quickly all of this might happen. 65 million years from now is really not that far when it comes to cosmology. As a matter of fact, 65 million years ago, that's when the dinosaur rock go boom kill dinosaurs. So definitely relatively short in cosmological terms. But none of this is provable or disprovable. Mathematically, it's there and it sort of makes sense, but sometimes math and physics do not actually align. A good example I made in one of the previous videos is that in theory, in mathematical theory, you could travel faster than light and then travel back in time. That's the video about time travel, somewhere right there or in the description. But in physics we know that it's impossible and any kind of a time travel faster than light violates a lot of different physics, making it something that can never be achieved no matter what. And because a lot of things in this model depend on the idea of dark energy already being a poorly understood, poorly explained concept, in that sense it's more a hypothetical scenario than anything else. But for the physicists that do like the idea of quintessence, this particular paper actually does discover some really interesting ideas. Such as, for example, that dark energy or quintessence can decay with time. And at some point through this decay, it might start acting like typical matter instead of repulsive matter. And after just a few billion years, the universe is actually going to contract by about half. It's going to shrink more and more with time. Suggesting that all of this can change pretty quickly and escalate quite dramatically within just a billion years or so. So quite a unique proposition and quite an interesting paper. But what exactly is happening with the universe and what exactly is happening with dark energy is probably a question we're not going to be answering for the next few years at least, possibly even a few decades. At the moment there's just not enough data collected by various telescopes and there's really not enough data from the most distant parts of the universe in order to figure out where the universe is headed and what exactly is this dark energy, if it even exists. We might be discovering more about all of this in the next few years, so make sure to subscribe because there's going to be a follow-up to all of this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.